Today we have our first social justice on screen Got Academy podcast. Special guest, Eliana Cohen. Hi everybody! Hello Eliana! Hello Gil! How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good and I'm really, really happy that we are doing this podcast. Me we have too. been talking about this podcast for... About a year. About a year. <laughs> and now we are... I think, I think more. I think more. Yeah, I think we started talking about it like two years ago. Wasn't two years it? ago. And now it's happening. It is. And we're going to do social justice on screen. On screen social justice. <laughs> This is what it's going to be. And we're going to start with Breaking Bad. Let's do it. We want to talk about Breaking Bad and the angry white men. The angry white men in Breaking Bad. Mm-hmm. And, but first, let me uh, introduce you. Uh, you introduce yourself, <laughs> maybe. That's better. I'm Eliana. Eliana. Uh, I'm a PhD candidate, um, studying to be a PhD uh, in social psychology. Okay. So I look at psychology from the point of view of society and the relationships between people and groups. Uh, and it's I, not a clinical psychology. It's not, no, I do okay. research. I don't treat. Um, so okay. I specifically focus on gender bias. Gender bias. Yes. This feels very aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know, it's a scary time to be a man, isn't it? It's very scary, scary times out there. Uh, I know, uh, sometimes I walk the street... And you just want to harass a woman and you can't. It's, uh, everything has been taken away. Sometimes I, I can't even harass women in my own head. <laughs> That's really unacceptable. Unacceptable. And I feel that you studying this is actually very aggressive towards me. <laughs> I think you should apologize. I'll try and be better. And uh, we know each other because we are... Ex family, we are well, still family. I <laughs> still, still call us family. Okay, we I'm are happy you said it. brother and sister in law, brother and sister in law, <laughs> ex, ex brother and sister in law, ex law, ex law. <laughs> It's a long story. It's a long story. Okay, so you want to talk about Breaking Bad? Yes, so first of all, okay, so Breaking Bad, one of the most popular TV shows of all time. Some even say that it's one of the best TV shows of all time, and a lot, obviously, a lot has been written and said about it. Uh, how it captures the t- uh, how it captured the times mostly I think most of the things that were said about it is how it captured that like, the economic angst of the post uh, 2008 uh, crash oh and basically it's a story about a man that starts off as a good man and then slowly deteriorates and becomes an immoral man a bad man and mm-hmm. And we are left with the question, was he always that bad? Or maybe the circumstances changed and made him who he was. But he starts off as this all-American uh, poster yeah. boy teacher and ends up as a mass murderer, serial killer, crazy but, person. But saying that the circumstances have changed is, is giving him more credit than he deserves. He changed the circumstances. Okay, let's... Everything uh, was his choice. Let's talk about it. about a theory, a thought that you have yes. about Breaking Bad, how it's basically a show about angry white, angry men, white men who are yeah. losing their grip yes. on the world. So I think I, I love Breaking Bad, although it was difficult to watch because uh, it's, it's a very difficult emotionally, this TV series. But uh, I think what it is interesting about it didn't only ca- capture its time, but it kind of forecasted the future a little bit, and I'll explain mm. what I mean. So Breaking Bad is about a man, a middle class, white, middle aged man yeah. who in our society has been long considered the default person, right? So the default person okay. is, a, is a white, middle class, middle aged man. And anything else is an exception to this rule. So if you're a woman, you are not a man. Uh-huh. If you're black, you are, your identity is that you're black. If you're young, your identity is that you're young. And if you uh-huh. are Walter White, if you are a, a, a white middle class man um, in, in the middle uh, of, of his life, right. then you're simply a person. Right. You're like a generic person. A generic uh-huh. person. And this generic person was supposed to be successful in America. At least um, right. that's what he thought. And this is where the story starts. So this person, this generic person, uh, who was uh, the white man who was supposed to be dominating and supposed to be successful 
um, was in fact, according to the story's narrative, uh, supposed to be successful with a company that is now worth millions. Right. Except he wasn't successful. He was robbed. Mm, And who yeah. was he robbed by? By two of his uh, friends, former uh, partners. Not just friends. He was robbed by a Jew. <gasps> no. And a woman. Okay. Oh, uh, his friend is a Jew? His friend is a Jew. He's called Schwartz, which means black. Okay, so uh, every, almost of every minority is represented in, in, this, uh, in, in these thieves of, of this person's success. Um, the wait, Jewish wait, words. Wait, wait. Okay. <laughs> oh, by the way, what's Walter's last name? White. White. Uh, and, and what's his protege's last name? Jesse, what's his Jesse last name? Jesse Pinkman. Pinkman. Okay. Pink man. Oh, pink man. the white and the pink man. <laughs> oh, my goodness. My goodness. Okay. Walter White, has anybody ever mentioned that... Uh, do, you, do you think it's deliberate that his name I'm is sure, White? I'm sure. I'm sure. I mean, come on. Three of the names... Walter White, Jesse Pinkman, and Schwartz. Oh, Black. my goodness. I mean, that's the guy who steals the company. Oh. I'm sure that the creators intended this to be representative of something. So they are critical they are of critical. this uh, well, outlook on the world. That, 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 that is actually a question that I still find open. Were... <laughs> the creators empathetic towards Walter White or um, were they critical of him? Because throughout the story, even though we see a person who gradually becomes a monster, right. as, as the audience, we are still supposed to somehow believe that there's good inside of him. And why? Wh- This is so why? weird. Why? This guy does any abominable, fil- abominable things... Ab- that you can imagine. Okay? Bad, bad. <laughs> bad. <laughs> Let's stay with simple yeah. words. <laughs> We are Israeli. Right. Uh, every bad thing that you can uh, imagine. But still. But still, okay. we, we believe that there's good in him. And so, so I think it's not only... Okay, we, uh, we'll go through some more about the social psychology, but there's also a storytelling bias and manipulation that makes us... root for him and it's not unique for Breaking Bad it's not unique for Breaking Bad let's, let's take for example uh, in, in Orange is the New Black there was a point uh, in which an officer choked uh, one of the black uh, um, protagonists there mm. um, choked her to death and, and she died oh. and and this officer was portrayed as a, as a good kid who just wanted to help he says something about he just wanted to help I think help um, her not he breathe. just wanted to help In the world or something he was a, he was like this innocent guy who just was just looking for a job and got a job at a prison as a, as a, as a guard in a prison okay. and it just happened to have choked this woman because there was a riot and he didn't understand what he was doing blah 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 but this is how you know this obviously this could happen but this is the story that they chose to tell of a white officer choking a black guy Uh, a, a, a black woman to death this is the story that they chose to tell out of every possible scenario that there are and, and how many scenarios in reality really look like that of really good kids who just you know who have no drop of racism in their blood and just wanted to help or happen to have choke a, a black, a black, guy. black, a black right. woman or a black guy right especially with uh, law enforcement white so, law enforcement and yes black, so we, we uh, always yeah. tend to assume exactly if the if the villain is, is, is white we, we kind of tend to assume that they you know inside they're really good and something just happened there So that's the same okay. with Walter White. Okay, I agree, but just, just for my point, yes. I think that because we are immersed in his point of view and he is the protagonist and this is a story... Which is a choice by itself. Yes. He is the protagonist. Yes, yes, yes. I'm but saying... But that's also the story of the world, usually. The protagonist is a white male and his outlook on the world is the outlook and everyone else is kind of the, you know, the, the background, the extra. So that's, yeah. that's a choice in itself. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah obviously. But go on. It's like, okay, so we can take, for example, The Wire. Mm-hmm. The Wire is filled with black characters, protagonists in some ways. And, in, and when we are immo- immersed in their point of view, it's, it's a trick, it's a manipulation, a storytelling manipulation that we accept their, the way that they see the world. Uh, the, the, have you watched uh, The Shield? The Shield. It's one of my favorite shows of all time. Criminally underrated. It, it's actually kind of similar to Breaking Bad. And okay. I think better than Breaking Bad. <laughs> uh, it's about a, a, a police team in, in LA in the early 2000s. 
and the protagonist is kind of similar in kind of in, in many ways to Walter White and because we see his point of view and because we want the story to move forward anyone who stands in his way exactly is automatically just the working against the story come on uh, <laughs> like his wife so Walter White's uh, wife yes you are preventing him so let's, let's talk from, about the wife from uh, From doing, from, stuff, from doing stuff, yes, stuff, exactly. Interesting stuff. Yes. If you win and he does what you want, then there's no more story. Yes, that's true. And that is exactly the manipulation that the creators can use to steer us towards what they, what they want us to feel. But, they, but let's talk yeah. about the wife, the stunting wife. Ah, Compare- ah, 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 ah. Don't sell drugs, <laughs> don't kill people. Oh, haven't we that. all heard that before? <laughs> <laughs> so right now, what I need is for you to climb down out of my ass. A white middle class middle aged man mm. who is basically dead inside but uh, there's there's no excitement there anymore and they don't fulfill any of their dreams right. the the man is usually represented as this free spirit who has been kind of Right. harnessed and, and, right, and, right, and right. brought put into in a cage. yeah put in a cage uh, by, by a woman who civilized him and, right, and, and right. she represents society yes uh, exactly uh, uh, and Walter White says fuck that Fuck society, I followed the rules and I got a raw deal. So now I'm going to do what I want. But he did get, get a raw deal. He was part of this triumvirate who, who, who established this company. And who chose to leave? He chose to leave the company. He chose, he could have negotiated any kind of deal that he wanted with, you know, Mr. Schwartz and, and his former lover. And he chose to live in those terms. Yes, and he lost, you know. But this is the story of the white male. Accusing everyone else, blaming everyone else for your poor choices. Yes, he made a bad choice by leaving the company at this stage. Okay? And, and by the way, if we're talking about the representation of that, you know, what happened at, this, at that point, he chose because he fell in love with his wife. And so if we look from a, from a male kind of a, a, a male mm. value perspective, we talk about, a lot about toxic masculinity these days. And, and this act of leaving his company... He chose um, love no. over money and power. Right. And that got him the raw deal, right? That uh, was his downfall. And, and, and choosing relationships over money and power was his downfall. So, so now he's going back to the toxic masculinity, uh, masculinity um, values. And he, says, uh, and he says, I'm going to get my money back. And that's what the story is about. All he cares is the money. supposedly to help his family but obviously right. he misses the entire point because right. by the end we know that no amount it. of money in the world will fix what he has done to his family right we know that he missed the point and there's also the point in the first season when when he goes to ask for money mm-hmm. from uh, mr Jewish Schwartz and his wife and then he doesn't right no, he does he he can't You know, let go of his pride. His, his wife... Even though he needs the money for his family. Nothing. His wife, who, who represents more uh, female values of relationships over power, can come she's to an old friend. She's, she's rational. Exactly. The hysterical wife. Right. And he's just like all <laughs> overcome with feelings and all kinds of stuff. No, I don't feel like asking him. <laughs> she's like, no, let's look at it uh, yes, rationally. Yes, yes, yes. <sighs> no, he's basically whining about <sighs> the fact that he can't afford cancer treatments when there's a, a very, very simple solution that will allow him to afford it and will healthcare? keep his family... Healthcare through his, through his uh, friend's work. His friend has offered him a job. his health care would take care of him right. his family would be fine no one would have to die in, in you know in, in the story but he's you know he, he wants to be a man he wants to have mm. a big dick and get the money <laughs> so, himself okay uh, even if it means killing people if it is being violent and so that's that's where the story takes us and he, and he becomes more and more right. of, a, of a monster and also when he goes to ask for the money and then doesn't ask for the money he has already killed one person right yeah The, like in the first uh, few episodes he kill uh, kills uh, this yes. uh, drug dealer yeah. in his basement so he already knows the price tag for this yeah, for this choice known better he and then he's like better. okay I prefer to go down this <laughs> route and then just get the money then, yeah then and ask someone the for help yeah. right that's a that's a feminine mm-hmm. thing to do to ask someone for help um, usually don't need help <laughs> this is your one and only warning do not sell marijuana to my husband okay I mean it 
you know, and how does the story end? What is the, what is the last thing that no, Walter... No, 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 no. Before we go to the end, okay, okay. Before... So he's going through this, like, okay, so he's, he has cancer, but it's kind of a representation of this midlife crisis, mm-hmm. malaise, right? You're, you're taking stock of your life when you're 40 or 50, and yeah. then you're like, what have I achieved? What exactly. do I want from my life? Who am I? This is not what I what I wished for myself when I was a boy. I wanted to be an astronaut. I wanted to be a president. The cancer is simply a wake up call, right? We start without the cancer. We start with him having to shine the car of his student, having to to mm. to clean the car of his student, and it was the most humiliating scene. Fuck you and your eyebrows. <laughs> We start with a man whose manhood was taken from him, who doesn't make enough money, doesn't have respect, doesn't have power, um, and... Even dresses like in this funny underwear, right, to highlight how uh, yes, dorky he is. Exactly. Mm. Obviously doesn't have, you know, very good sex with his wife anymore. So we start with... And, and the cancer is reminding him of his mort- mortality and gives the, the wake-up call that he supposedly needs in order to... What are you doing? What's wrong, Chief? Having a little trouble walking? Unless you what, man? Well, you'll have one shot. You better make it good. What are you waiting for your girlfriends? You better go. So the way you see it, you were saying that it's very predictive and it was predictive. So this is what you're talking about, right? Yes. It's so Trump exactly. So, yeah. So, so Trump voters thinking basically their privilege was taken away from them, their rights were taken away from them, they feel like a prosecuted minority, and you hear a lot of men talk about right. this. But this is a very, very big generalization, not all Trump voters, some no, of, of them, course. I assume, are good people. Yeah, no, obviously, a lot of Trump supporters are, are good people. Yeah. I mean, um, it was a joke about what Trump said <laughs> about the Mexicans. Um, and... And no, and and I feel um, we're I talking feel about sad like the these. archetype, the archetype, yeah. the young man archetype, white man who feels right disenfranchised because yes. uh, the world is not how. But I have to say that on, they told on a, them it was. you know on a psychological and an emotional level, I feel sad for these men. I, I am not only angry at them, which I sometimes am, but mm. I I really do feel sad for them because I feel the way they were raised and the way the world is not set up is not compatible. Right. Um, and that's not fair. It's not fair. They don't know what is expected of them right. anymore. And when they say, when a man says, oh, we don't, we can't, um, you don't know how to, uh, you can't uh, hit on a woman anymore. You know, what, what are we going to do? Well, soon there's not going to be any more romance left. <laughs> it, you know, it's, it's ridiculous because what, you can't sexually harass women anymore, right. so it's a problem. But on the other hand, if you look at it from... From their point of view, right. or from an empathetic point of view, it is sad that they were never taught how to start a romantic right. uh, conversation with someone without being aggressive. Right. And now they have no tools. Right. So it is a problem, and I right. agree with what you should right. But going back to Breaking Bad... Okay, so Breaking Bad. So Walter White. Yes. He's not only aggressive, he's also very smart. He is smart. He's very smart. And he starts off kind of uh, like, uh, you know, like naive. He's the teacher. Teacher, that's a good position, right? He teaches our children, Mm -hmm. educates our children. He's very excited about his position. He wants to be a good teacher. Mm -hmm. I think the, uh, the fact that he's a teacher is part of the naivete that he shows in the beginning. He left money and position... Uh, and mm-hmm. power and the opportunity yeah. to be rich uh, in order to be a good guy, a teacher, right. a husband, a person with a relationships. But look where that landed him. According to the story, that was his fatal mistake. Mm-hmm. Right? Raising a handi- uh, handicapped son. Raising a handicapped son. He's, he's, a, he's a, like the, the perfect, perfectly good guy. Right. And we want... Anna Gunn, I don't remember her name, her character's name. We want her to stop her husband if, like, if we knew them and they were like sharing. What do you think we should do? <laughs> should, he, sh- should he sell drugs? You wouldn't say, say to her, now, come on, lighten <laughs> up, let him do his thing. <laughs> so I think there's like a storytelling manipulation that is not necessarily 100% related to being a man and being a woman and being white and being black. It's you you accept the point of view that you are given. 
the Sopranos is the same thing with Carmela Soprano. She but, but we choose Tony his Soprano. point of view. The creators choose his point of view throughout the entire right. series. And they weren't aware of what they were doing 100%. Like when people, turns out, hated his wife, despised his wife, they were surprised. They were like... <laughs> no, no, we didn't mean that. What are you doing? And then Reggie wrote an article and op-ed about it uh, in the New York Times. By the way, do you know if the if the creators are all uh, men? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but they're good men. What well, What does it mean, though? Yeah, so here again, you assume that their intentions were good, but it, when we look at the series that they created, I I am left with a question of of whether they are completely against Walter White or whether they identify with his fantasy to some degree. Mm. You know, with his fantasy mm. to, to break loose of societies. School teacher cancer, desperate for money. Okay, we're done here. Roped into working for, unable to even quit. Let's both of us stop trying to justify this whole thing and admit you're in danger. Who are you talking to right now? Who is it you think you see? No, you clearly don't know who you're talking to. So let me clue you in. I am not in danger, Skylar. I am the danger. But it's okay to yeah, fantasize. Yeah, everyone fantasizes about breaking loose from society, but the way he does it, with right. being violent towards his wife and being violent and, and right. caring about the money all right. the time. Um, I think I assume that they are good people because of the follow-up show that they did, uh, Better Call Saul. Right. And then I'm like, oh, they're sensitive dudes. And <laughs> it's such a good show. It's a lot better than Breaking Bad, right. in my humble opinion. Interesting. And then I'm like, okay, so I can look back and say, uh, yeah, this is the, they didn't like. They didn't like they Walter didn't like White. Walter White. Maybe they didn't know. Maybe they went through their own journey and personal yeah, maybe, demons as maybe. they were. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to, to accept that. But they definitely, definitely. Went, apology. At least, <laughs> at least in the beginning, they definitely portray his, um, his acceptance of, of, uh, of feminine values such as relationships and love um, over money and power as the starting point of what brought him right. to a low point of, of his, in his life. Right, 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 right. right. Um, They're also products of society, right? It's they not are. They live also. on an island and they invented this, yes. uh, this story out yeah. of uh, the thin air. And I think what's interesting is also the end. How the last thing... So the last thing Walter wants to do, the, 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 the thing that he wants to, to accomplish throughout the series <clears throat> is giving his family money, right? Right. You, we kind of forget about it. We kind of forget about it, but he achieves that. He threatens um, Schwartz and his previous lover, and um, and he, he achieves the, the, this point. Although, by this point, we know that no amount of money in the world is going to uh, mend the family that he broke so badly. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, nothing is going to help. And his and we know that, his, that he completely missed the point. Um, his attempt to strengthen his family with money and power... Um, will not undo the damage that he yeah. did by yeah. by breaking the relationship to him. Yeah, and he wanted the credit at the beginning. By the end, uh, he couldn't get the credit, so he's like, yes. "Okay, give them the money." Yeah, without just give credit. them the money. Yeah. But he, at least, you know, he it's a selfish act. He wants to feel good. He wants to know that his family will have money. Um, right, right. But, and he told uh, this uh, Jew boy, he told him, "It's not going to be your money." Exactly. It's my money. Yes. It's my money that yeah. you're just going to give to them he's, because that's the only way they're going to accept it. So I win, you lose. Ha <laughs> ha. He still cares about his ego, right? Yeah. So he's Having the Jewish still people suffer very now. much. <laughs> 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 he's still very much uh, within the male. But okay, so he achieves his goal. His family's going to have the money, right. right? We could have ended there. But what's the last thing he wants to do? He goes to save his friend. No, he goes to kill all of his enemies, right? He's mm. going to slaughter all of them. He didn't know that he was going to be able to save Jesse at this point, right? He. Another former family member. <laughs> it's not former. No Come former, on. not former. No You're no. the father of my niece. You're always going to be my no, family. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. no, it's just funny. Yeah, for former family is just funny. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. He Where goes, to, ki- he, yeah, he ah, goes he to kill all okay. of them. Okay, what does that tell you? It tells me that his last act, he, he st- you know, he's, he believes so deeply in masculinity values and specifically toxic masculinity values that mm-hmm. his, his, the only way he can win is by killing off his, his, his enemies. And by the way, he, yes, he rescues, you know, Jesse. 
But but how does he that how does he really try to rescue Jesse? And why is Jesse there? <laughs> why, why okay. It's like you push somebody yes. into a burning building and then, oh, I saved you. Yes, exactly. So he did he didn't know that he wasn't gonna kill Jesse too. But okay, Jesse's situation was worse than death at that point. Mm. So even if he would have killed Jesse, it would have been good. Okay, but let's say so he killed all his in the enemies. That's the only way he knows how to do it, right? He could have sneaked in and took him out, but he killed all of his enemies and now he wants to really save Jesse. He wants to save Jesse's soul too. And how does he want to save Jesse's soul? How? He asks Jesse to kill him. That's the uh, only th- way he knows how people can violence. win by, by uh. killing. That's the only thing that he thinks will really save Jesse, to kill him. But Jesse, who is the hopeful model of a new man, okay. has already learned. He's young, right? So he's a different generation. Okay. He has hope. He's our hope in this series because he has already learned by then that killing will lead you nowhere. Right. And he's made mistakes. And he's made mistakes, but he cared more about relationships than about money mm. the entire series, right? What did he want? He just wanted love. He wanted... Right, from his parents. From his parents and from his girlfriend who Walter White basically killed. Right. Um, and he stayed with, a, with the terrible Nazis who was torturing him to save a boy. From being killed uh. um, and and he knows by that point that that killing is not going to get him the freedom from even though he hates Walter and so he tells him no you kill yourself and he, he drives off you know I, I already know it that killing is wrong <laughs> Can I get uh, some, I don't know, some credit for that I don't know I'm a man and killing is wrong this is what I teach well my done. daughter killing is wrong <laughs> This is prime education right here. <laughs> I'm going to give so, you a golden star yes, afterwards. Yes, yes, yes. So you think that, okay. But, okay, so, but who did he kill? So he is Walter White. Mm-hmm. And you say that he represents this uh, oh, white lash, yeah. back lash, ma- whatever, male exactly. lash, whatever you call it. But he kills people who are really white supremacists. Right. So compared to them, yeah. he's not that bad. You know, you always... Th- the. the The bad guys always need worse guys so mm. they can point their finger to. Right. And right? we can say, okay, yeah. he's, not, he's not as can, bad. Can as I give an was. example from Israeli politics? Oh, um, yeah, what's, what's the best scenario for, for Netanyahu right now that the ultra-right, the, 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 the Kach people, the, KK, the, the Jewish KKK, the Jewish KKK people get, get into the Knesset because then no he can say, um, you know, I, right. I'm... I'm middle, I'm center, right, right? right? I represent, you right. know, just center values of, of rationale. Right. Even though he is completely yeah. ultra-right himself right yeah. now, yeah. Um, he can point to someone worse. So right. that's Don't always know. been a good thing for, for, uh, for extremists, to have someone more extreme for them. And that's true for Walter White. He can kill, uh, he, he, he has done every terrible thing in the book, but at least he's not a Nazi. You know, but Nazism, <laughs> Nazism is kind of a mythical monster by now. Uh, they, they were in power in the 30s and the 40s, and since then they're a fringe ideology, but they don't have any more power. Yeah, um, yeah not but political people, power. But, yeah. yeah, but people can always point at them as the worst thing. So if they're the worst thing, anything else is not so bad. Um, and Are there good people on both sides? Are there good <laughs> people on that side? Oh, yeah. Maybe. Okay. Um, so you think that that was like but, a, uh, but by a the way, b- By the way, before the Nazis, almost everyone, of almost all the bad people were minorities, right? Either mm. black or Mexican. Mm. Black people? That were, were the yeah, black the, people? the black guy who was running, who was employing Walter right, White. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Mm. So, uh, yeah, a lot of the minority, like mo- most They were of, the bad guys and doing like yeah, so, so, so Walter White is just a normal white guy. He's like a good white dude. And then all the minorities, you know, the Jew, the woman, the black, the Mexican, they all take power away from him. And then like the last, the last bad guys were the Nazis, which obviously mm. no one likes. So <laughs> it's not, it's a cop out. Yes. Um, uh, okay, and you think that it was like uh, deliberate in criticism or unconscious, latent, I don't know if racism, like racial? So, you know, it's an interesting question because it used, to, it, the, the new reading of literature, was, which has dominated the literature world for, for decades now, says that it doesn't matter what the creators wanted. Mm. What matters is what is the reading? Mm. How should the story be read? Mm. Um, I agree with that. And I think the story should be read as an allegory. Uh, and in this allegory, the m- toxic masculinity 
blows up and kills everyone um, except the one man who was able to reform and to become more feminine and more uh, and less aggressive who's Jesse he's the one person who comes out of this situation right. um, but of course they, they, they left a lot of damage and also there way. was this part like in the episode like the penultimate episode or the episode before that when Walter White when he lo- when Walter White when Walter White loses the entire audience when he kidnaps his own daughter mm. right we talked about it yeah taking away yeah. from his wife her baby yes yes her baby yes oh my god no Walt Mom. no Walt Walt please no Yes, that's the point in which the audience is now empathetic towards the mother because the one thing that the mother owns is the baby, yeah. right? So she should stop nagging her husband and stop telling him not to sell drugs and all those annoying things that women do. <laughs> you know, stop, drug, stop selling drugs, stop uh. killing, pick up your socks. But, <laughs> but at least she should be allowed to be a mother. At least uh. she should be allowed to have... Her right. daughter and now he crossed the line yes exactly oh. now he crossed the line because that's not that's not his territory I want to later talk about uh, toxic femininity <laughs> and I want to get your take on it something real from my own life my own experience and I'm gonna put it uh, as extra content uh, for patrons okay so you can go to patreon.com slash got academy to hear my experiences my very painful experiences with toxic with toxic femininity So there's a theoretical framework for, for sexism uh, that, uh, that is called ambivalent sexism. So ambivalent sexism is the theory that there's two parts of sexism. One is hostile sexism. Oh, women are cheaters and they only care about money and you know, they, 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 they can never like each other and they're always hostile towards other women. Things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's also benevolent sexism. So, so benevolent sexism is the idea that women are better than men, mm-hmm. but all in ways that somehow mean that men should be, stay in control. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Women are better uh, with emotions. Therefore, they should take care of the children and stay at home. Uh, we, right. Women have, uh, are um, right. more, like, more moral. Therefore, they shouldn't be CEOs of big companies because they won't know how to make tough decisions. Right. Um, so it's kind of a mystical view, right? It's kind of a mystical right. view. And, um, and, and, and the idea is that this ambivalent sexism, there's both benevolent mm. sexism and hostile sexism. There are also uh, kind of ways to punish bad women and, and reward good women, right? If you are not fulfilling your role as a woman, you'll be punished with the idea that you're a slut, that you're, um, mm. that you're not a good woman, all the, all the hostile things that, that are said about women. And if you, if you do uh, complete your role as a, as a, as a woman, you, you're a mother, you're a housemaker, then all of the good things, you'll get the praise. The one thing that, that Walter White's wife had going for her was that she was a mother and she did fulfill her role in that. And it was annoying to the, to, the, to the viewers that she kept telling her husband what to do financially because that's not her territory. Uh, okay, so, but, but, the but benefit, when he takes the, the yes, baby... Then, then it's not okay. Ooh, okay. There's also something about cancer that is, uh, as, a, as a storytelling uh, tool, that it makes us empathize with him because it's really unfair. It's like an act of God. Yes. Right. He didn't do anything to deserve that. That wasn't uh, a consequence of, of his choices. Mm-hmm. You're right. But again, I would say that that's a storytelling manipulation. Definitely. Okay, so, so let's, let's, let's wrap it up. Eliana, did you have a good time? I had a great time. Thank you. And let's try to do it again. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely. We'll talk about social justice in, on the screen. Yeah, on screen social justice. On screen social justice. If you have any movies or TV shows that you think will fit, let us know. I can talk about it all day. Ooh. <laughs> Gender bias all day. All day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds good, right? Sounds very good. <laughs> I'm sure that the men around you are very, very happy. By the way, you have two sons. I have two sons and a husband. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. All rav- raging feminists. <laughs> Even the two sons, how old are they? <laughs> they're two and a half and nine months and they're already... <laughs> <laughs> already burning bras. <laughs> exactly. Okay. And, uh, okay, okay. So, so, so let's wrap it up. And if you want to, to listen to the extra part where I rant about toxic femininity and toxic 
not toxic feminism, toxic, fe toxic femininity, then you can get that on our Patreon page. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a five star rating and maybe a comment. If you want to support this channel, please go to patreon.com slash gotacademy.